guys, welcome back. Today we're gonna to do something very special for you. We're doing another cooking video, but today we are in my office and we're gonna be cooking with a little bit of a twist. We are gonna create a gourmet meal using the Camp Chef Striker. Now I'm not saying that you should be at home cooking for your family on the Camp Chef Striker or that you're gonna haul any of this ingredients into the backcountry with you, but I wanted to show you two things. I wanted to show you the power of this lightweight stove, but I also wanted to show you one of my absolute favorite recipes to do with any wild game. If it's uh, deer, elk, fish, upland birds, this sauce that we're gonna create, you can put it on anything. I've dipped potato chips in it, it's been amazing. So what we're gonna be doing is, uh, this is Roosevelt elk steak, and we're gonna be creating a creamy mushroom dill sauce. And this is an ingredients that you're gonna need. We've got a little bit of dill, a little bit of parsley. We've got some freshly ground Parmesan, that's not true, I bought it from the store. We've got uh, some shallots, some garlic, mushrooms, and then the only real seasoning we're gonna use is salt and pepper. So the first things first, we are gonna cook these steaks. Now I must say, for legal purposes, I would not recommend cooking inside of an enclosed building. But we're in my shop, it has garage doors that are open, all the windows are open, we're safe. So the great thing about this little striker is, like I said, it's powerful, it's lightweight, and it's got its own ignition source. You don't have to have a light or anything. First time, every time. So we're gonna crank this bad boy up. Just gonna put a little bit of oil in the pot. We're gonna let that get warm and then we're gonna throw our steak on there. As you can see, that oil has gotten hot within probably 45 seconds. So we're gonna throw our steak in on there. A little salt and pepper. Now, depending on how you like your steak, these steaks are not real thick. They're probably just over a quarter inch, maybe a half inch thick. Uh, I like medium rare at most, so this probably will only take two minutes on each side. It's not real long. All right, guys, as you can see, this stove is powerful. This has been about a minute and a half. Got a good crust on there. We're going to flip it, do the same, about a minute and a half, two minutes on this side, and then we'll be ready to cook our sauce. A little more salt and pepper on this side. Don't you wish your office was as cool as ours? We even have an office dog, Murph. Hi, Murph. Come here. Nope, no dogs in the kitchen while we're cooking. Good boy. All right, that's our first steak. As you can see, nice crust, probably a nice medium rare on the inside. All right, now we're gonna cook our second steak. Back into the hot oil, a little salt and pepper. I never do anything left-handed except for spread spices. Does that mean I'm ambidextrous? I feel more control left-handed, is that weird? All right guys, second steak is done. How perfectly those steaks look. Now the secret is we're gonna wanna turn this way down almost to the lowest setting. Now what we're gonna do is make the creamy mushroom dill sauce. And so this time we're gonna use uh, three slabs of butter maybe four. We want this turned way down. Good thing about doing the steaks first and then the sauce is you get all that flavor from the steaks still in your pan. And now we're just gonna melt this butter down. Okay, as you can see, we got the butter melted down and what I've got is the shallots and the garlic. A lot of people say, what are shallots? It's just a better cook uh, onion for cooking is what I would describe a shallot to be. Man, it smells amazing. I'm gonna cook those down a little bit. A little salt and pepper in there. All right, now we're gonna add our mushrooms. As you can see, they're nice and cooked down. I'm gonna use all these mushrooms. So you wanna get your mushrooms in there and then you wanna make sure your, all your mushrooms get coated with the butter and the shallots and all the, all the fun stuff. All right, and we're gonna throw the lid on this thing and let it sit. Probably, mushrooms are gonna probably take around five minutes. All right, guys, the mushrooms are getting close. I think we're gonna call it good. So, uh, as you can see, nice and brown and beautiful. Now what we're gonna wanna do now is we are going to add our heavy whipping cream. Now this is only a quarter cup, 
maybe even a little less heavy whipping cream. And I'm only making this recipe for two people. So I'm gonna leave the uh, ingredients in the description box and just add to it if you're making it for more people. But we got our heavy whipping cream added in there and what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna want this to start simmering it and then we're gonna want it to reduce and become thicker. And that's what creates the creamy dill sauce. So now we're just gonna let it simmer. You can see it's starting to boil right now. We're gonna throw the lid on. This is gonna take probably another four to five minutes for it to reduce. I don't think it actually helps, but for whatever reason, anytime I'm cooking, I think it, it's going to make it taste better the more I stir it. And I don't believe that's necessarily true. Stop stirring. So you can see it's starting to reduce and starting to get a lot thicker. Still has a few more minutes, but at this point, this is where I like to add a few more ingredients. I'm going to add some Parmesan cheese. I'm gonna add the dill. So I've got dill and uh, fresh cut parsley. The parsley is only for a garnish. <clears throat> it's, it's all show, no go, is what I like to say. Some dill in there. I can't remember if I added any salt and pepper to the sauce, I'm gonna add just a little bit. You're, also, you're, you're gonna have some carryover salt and pepper from the steaks as well, so you don't wanna get too crazy or else this can get real, real sodium-y quick. Is that a word? So while the cream is finishing up, I've let these steaks rest. I didn't want to cut them. When you, when you cook any meat, you want to let it rest for up to five to 10 minutes and without cutting into it. So now we're going to cut into it um, because part of the, this recipe is about the presentation that you give to your buddies and your friends. So you want to make it look real good. You don't want to let them cut it up because they'll just cut it up into bite-sized pieces and eat it. You want to present it to them. So this piece I cut, cooked for myself is uh, more of a rare piece, rare to medium rare. And then this other piece will be more of a medium rare. Just kind of lay those bad boys down like that so you can show your friends what a perfect cook you are and how you just nailed the temp for them. There we go. That's actually not a crisp presentation, but whatever. All right, let's check in on our sauce here. Oh yeah, she looks gorgeous. We're gonna shut her off and let it cool down here now. Feels weird to be cooking sitting down, but the way Logan set the camera up, he said it's best if I sit down. Never done that before. All right, we are almost done. All right, ladies and gentlemen at home, the sauce is ready, the steak is accepting. It's time to plate this bad boy up. Like I said, it's all about presentation, which I'm not really great at, but a little more artistic than me can make this look pretty fancy. And like I said, I have some freshly cut parsley, and that's just for a little spice, you know, a little, ooh, I gotta put in the extra time. You guys know how we do it here on the Hush channel. The cook never eats first. Give me that camera. <laughs> you know who's ready to get down on that steak. <laughs> you want a fork or you just gonna use your hands? Wow, oh, that presentation, you can do that. Wow. Just the first bite. Every time. Casey's made this sauce for like the last four or five years. Off and on, he'll make it here, make it there. I always get excited when I see some dill in the refrigerator because this sauce is amazing. I think you nailed it, bro. Best yet. I mean, if <laughs> we're just going off the sound this is going on in your mouth, it's pretty good. <laughs> I'm salivating while I'm eating it. I like the Parmesan, that's a new touch. Yeah, it's new. So like, if you guys watch the channel, watch our cooking videos, I never stick to a recipe. I've done some things and I know like where to start the baseline and then I'll either add things or take it away just depending, but I never write anything down unless I write it in the description box for you guys. But I was thinking this morning, I said, you know what would probably be good in there as well is maybe some tomatoes right at the end. Mm. Just cook them a little bit. 
I don't know. Anyways, guys, thanks again for watching. I really want to do a little series of maybe like office cooking or cooking with a backcountry stove and uh, challenging other people. Let me know what you guys think. Like I was thinking about calling some people out on this one and saying, hey, make the most gourmet meal you can in your office using a backcountry stove. I didn't, but let us know if you'd watch that and maybe we'll do it next time. I'm going to dive into a plate of this myself.